this video I wanted to show you the basic parts of a treadle, a treadle base. This is a treadle base without a cabinet. It's by Singer, as you can see. Um, it's probably from at least 1900 because I have treadles from 1890s and they do not have the name Singer in the middle. So this is from a little bit later than that, um, a little bit later than the 1890s and at least after 1900. I have a, here an 1897 um, Singer treadle that does have this kind of base on it. So we're probably talking, my 1891 does not have the name Singer on it. So we're talking right about the end of the 1890s, 1900. These are the legs on the side. They are sometimes referred to as the irons. Sometimes the whole unit is referred to as the irons. This usually has better gold paint on it. I'm not sure why this flaked off, but usually on this type, the singer name is in gold. When it's a non-singer treadle, you could either have the company name in the middle or uh, I have another treadle base that has no name on it at all that I think might be a standard. So the decorations will vary, but you have two treadle legs right there. This down here is an, um, a Singer insignia in this case. This is the center bracket that keeps everything at the right distance. This is the pedal. What leads from the pedal to the flywheel is called a pitman rod. And on this one, this is metal, often, especially from the 1900s, the 1890s, 1900s, they could be wooden. This one is metal and turns the flywheel. Now around the flywheel this unit here, with this loop at the top that moves, is called the belt guard. And when you have a treadle belt on the flywheel, it's threaded through this loop of the belt guard. And if you need to uh, change the belt or take the belt off the wheel for some other reason, you just go like that and it pulls the belt right off the wheel. So that's the front belt guard. There's also a back belt guide right here. Now, where the belt would come up through this guide, it would then come at an angle up into a cabinet top. The same thing here, it would come off through this guide and go up at an angle up through the cabinet around the hand wheel on the machine and it's connected that it's all one big loop the belt is all one big loop so that's the belt guard the flywheel the pitman rod is right here the pedal the center brace the legs and on this particular uh, treadle base what I've just noticed is that there is a bolt missing on the left so if you're looking at these to buy or you're not sure if they're complete when you're looking at them, you need to make sure that the pedal moves the wheel, that you have the two belt guides, that all bolts are present. You need a different bolt here than you would on the outside legs because the wheel actually sits on like a pivot bolt. This has a point at the end of it, and that's what the wheel sits at. So those are the main parts of a treadle base. I've seen them a lot of times where the whole wheel section is missing. Uh, the pedal may be there, but the pitman rod has been removed from the bottom. This has a bolt on the bottom. Um, the wooden ones have adjustment pins at the top. This seems to have an extra bolt here on, on this flywheel that I don't have on my treadle. 
But the main parts that you want to look for are the legs, the brace, the two belt, the front belt guard, the two belt guides, the pitman rod, and you want to make sure that the wheel moves freely. And this one is dusty and dirty. See how it goes? You should have that action. If you plan on purchasing a base to use as a treadle, you need that action. This is dusty and dirty, as I said. And what I'm going to do is take regular sewing machine oil that I happen to buy by the gallon, and I'm going to put it on a rag, and I'm going to wipe down the whole thing. This is... Um, I'm not sure if it's wrought iron or cast iron, but I, I'm pretty sure it's done with a cold cast welding process. And because we're talking about iron that's from anywhere from the late 1800s to I don't know when they stopped making them, but the, the, these can become delicate. They can break or they can snap because they're old. So you, you don't want to be tossing this around. You, you can look at it and you go, wow, that's, that's cast iron. I can do anything with it. You kind of don't want to do that. You want to, you want to be a little bit careful with how you treat it because it is old. So I'm going to take a cloth and I'm just going to wipe the whole thing down with sewing machine oil. And even if you don't see a big difference in the finish, you want to do that anyway because um, the oil may collect dust, you know, but you'd be wiping it off again anyway. After you apply, you know, a good coat of oil, then you can wipe it down again. So you're just leaving a minimal layer of oil on the whole thing. It not only looks better, it, it runs better. You can oil any of the moving parts. The pitman rod joint down here. Um, the wheel, the cone uh, bolt over here that holds the wheel, any of the moving parts at all. Now this is probably a point, uh, point also and pivots in there. You can clean out the wheel. Um, if you're going to be installing a belt fairly soon, you don't want oil in the belt track here because you don't want it affecting your belt. But other than that, you can oil anything that moves and anything that's um, stationary except for the, the actual belt groove. And that's a basic antique. This one is a Singer treadle base that once you add a cabinet top, a flat top with drawers usually from two to four drawers, two to five drawers because they have a center drawer and then a machine and you're good to go.